So, hi guys. What we are going to do today, we are going to go further in the explanation of what sepsis can do. We are going to talk about control signals and how they operate components. We are going to do some manual input into the sepsis emulator. And we are going to uh, learn about advancing the clock. And as a second object, I have to tell you something about memory. So without further ado, let's go. Um, we talked about components before. Here they are. And of course in the emulator we have representations of components. For example, you can see that the context of register A here is zero. Context of the contents of register B also is zero. Now everything that is white on the screen you can use as a command. So if I type register A and I put a value, let's say CF in there, you can see that the context of register A is now CF. Let's say that we want to get the, what is in register A into register B. So from here to here. As we discussed in the previous video, we have to go through the data address bus. That's this one. So we have to set a control signal for register A to output its contents on the data address bus. So let's do that. That control signal is here. It's called RGAO, which stands for register A output, and we set it to 1. As you can see here. So register A is going to put its output, its contents I mean, going to output it on the data address bus. That's not the end of it. Register B has to be instructed to input it from the address bus. So register B has an input. So we are going to say RGBI equals 1. So register B input control signal now has the value 1. Nothing changed at register B though. That fits because up till now we have not spoken about the clock. The clock is a device in a computer, you can read it here, that generates pulses, zeros and ones in rapid succession. Every time a clock pulse is made, the control signals are processed. So we, here we have the P for control signals, and actually that means pulse. So if I specify a pulse, you will see that register A puts its output on the DAP, and register B reads it from the DAP. So you have to look here you want to see what happens. So now I'm going to give an enter. See, register B now has the context, content, I mean, that was in register A. So this is the way we can get stuff from one register to the other, and more broadly speaking, from one component to the other. Now let's talk about memory. Memory Initially, when you start sepsis, the memory is empty. Set in a different way, it contains all zeros. Memory for sepsis is limited to 256 bytes. Doesn't have to be larger. This is enough. And we also can say memory at location 80 has to contain high values, FF. So the result of that will be that over there, there will be, after I give enter, the value of FF will be in this location of memory. You can see the grouping, by the way, 
of the contents of memory, starting with address 0, all the way up to 1, uh, 0f, to 1, 0, to 1f, and then we are at 2, 0. So if I specify m1f aa, you see that at location 1f we now have an aa. Well, let's try to read that aa into register c. We go back to the control panel. First let's reset the previous control signals. RGA I0 and RGA B0. Why did it not work? There we go. Made a typo, I think. RGBI 0. There we go. So now we want to read something from memory. Now I have to tell you about how memory is addressed. I can simply put uh, memory output as 1. So this will mean that at the next clock cycle the memory component will put something on the DAB. But what would it put there? It will put something on the DAB as pointed to by the memory address register. The memory address register is connected to the memory and at the location where the memory address register points in memory that's the location it will be it will, it will work on. So if I put something in memory it will go into the location that the memory address register points to. Likewise, when the memory address register points at 1F and I give an O signal, it will put the contents of memory location 1F on the data address bus. So, that's a lot to take in. First, let's prepare register C to input what it's going to get from memory. So, RGCI equal, now equals 1. Now I have to put something in the MAR, the memory address register. We can find it here. So we say MAR 1F. So the memory address register now contains 1F, so the MAR points to 1F. Let's have a look. It contains AA. We go back. We proceed the clock by one clock pulse, and there we go, register C now contains AA. So we have read something from memory. While the memory address register still contains 1F, I'm going to reset the memory out, and I'm going to reset the RTC I. They contain both zeros now, and I'm going to instruct memory to read. So with the next clock pulse, memory is going to read from the DAP what we're going to put on there. So we are going to say RGA O equals 1. So what is in register A? will be output to the DAP and be read into memory at the location 1F. So let's pulse. We see nothing happen here, but let's go to memory. There we are, it now changes to CF and that is appropriate because that was the contents of register A. You have now learned how to manipulate things between the components of the computer, the emulated computer of sepsis. And we are going to 
do something in the next video that's called microcode. Microcode is a sequence of, uh, of clock pulses with different control signals that together form one operation, an opcode. Well, that's it for this time. See you in the next video.